Hi folks. I, I want to do this video of some things that might be of some interest to some of you. Or if not to you, perhaps you might know someone that might find these things interesting. First of all, the a number of movies or a number of you know companies that have movies up for Oscar contention have placed the screenplays for these movies online. You can download the screenplays and look at them. So if you've ever wanted to know what a screenplay looks like, you can go here and download them. If you're interested in writing, um, or if you know someone who's interested in writing, who's studying writing, these might also be of interest to them. Because I've, th there are some, I'll give you a, uh, this is a screenshot here of some of the movies that are available, this, that the screenplays are available for download. And, uh, it is, I'll give you the link to CBS News, <clears throat> excuse me, which itself has links to a whole bunch of movies. I think this is really exciting. I mean, a lot of you might not, but I do think this is really exciting. I'm very interested in language and literature. And for when I was in high school, probably my favorite form of literature were plays. I went through yeah, everything. Well, of course, Shakespeare. I adore Shakespeare. Went through everything with Shakespeare. Went through George Bernard Shaw. Went through Edward Elby, Harold Pinter. You know, the more, more it was very modern back then. Uh, it's more establishment now. And, you know, of course, Ibsen, Chekhov, everybody I could think of. So, but I really wasn't very familiar with screenplay. So this I find really exciting. I'm going to be downloading some of these uh, uh, screenplays and read them. So I thought that might be of interest to some of you. A second thing that I thought might be of interest to some people is the... Um, now, how I, a lot of people out there I know are into science fiction. And I've always been a huge fan of Isaac Asimov. And there is a dramatization of the Foundation Trilogy by Isaac Asimov at audible.com. It's only $1.95. Uh, and the entire dramatization is 7 hours and 48 minutes. So that's $1.95. I just bought it for 7 hours and 48 minutes. Now, I haven't I, or listened to it. Excuse me. It's only audio. So I haven't listened to it yet. Um, and when you go to audible.com, if you've never been there, you can go to audible.com or you can go to Amazon because Audible is owned by Amazon. And if you ever want something to find something in Amazon, you just put in the title and over on the side in Amazon where it says what format, you can pick audio. Well, however, I did like read the reviews. And one fellow pointed out that the very beginning is quite scratchy, but that's because it's trying to imitate an old time like news broadcast or something. Uh, that's what he said. I haven't listened to it yet, but come on, a dollar ninety-five for seven hours and forty-eight minutes of the Foundation trilogy dramatis, dramatized. I, I can't even say that. Uh, this is just really cool. I'll leave you the link to the Audible.com link for this, and it says learn how to get this free. You can do a thirty-day free trial with Audible and get get this or something else free. Personally, I would look for something more expensive free. You can get, you know, a more expensive piece free. Um, and then just simply buy this. Okay, now the very next thing is just really cool. This is an article by American Scholar about Robert Ingersoll. And you're probably going, who? Who's Robert Ingersoll? Well, I'm going to read to you from a little bit of the article. It says, why do some public figures who were famous in their own times become part of a nation's history, historical memory while others fade away or confined to what is called niche fame on the Internet? Robert Greene Ingersoll, 1833 to 1899, known in the last quarter of the 19th century as the great agnostic, once possessed real fame as one of the two most important champions of reason and secular government in American history, the other being Thomas Indeed, one of Ingersoll's lasting accomplishments as the preeminent American orator of his era was the revival of Paine, the preeminent publicist of the American Revolution in the historical memory and imagination of the nation. 
Um, by the way, if you hear some strange sounds, my cats have decided to have a little fuss with each other, so they're <laughs> whacking each other and snarling. Anyway, uh, to go on, Ingersoll emerged as a leading figure in what historians of American secularism consider the golden age of free thought, an era where immigration industrially industrialization and science, especially Charles Darwin's theory of evolution by means of natural selection, were challenging both religious orthodoxy and the supposedly simpler values of the nation's rural Anglo-Saxon past. That things were never really so simple was the message Ingersoll repeatedly conveyed as he spoke before more of his countrymen than ever even elected public leaders, including presidents, did at a time when lectures were both a form of mass entertainment and a vital source of information. So anyway, I think a lot of you might find this article very interesting. I will leave you a link to the article. <clears throat> now, one other thing is where I found this article, and that is my beloved Arts and Letters Daily. And I'll give you a link here. I've been meaning to tell people about this site before, if you don't already know about it. It's Arts and Letters Daily from the Chronicle of Higher Education. That's like a full title. And at the top, although it says philosophy, aesthetics, literature, language, trends, breakthroughs, ideas, criticism, culture, history, music, art, disputes, gossip. And yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's fantastic. There are a lot of, um, uh, you know, academic publications and articles uh, referenced here. And as you can see here, it has a little tiny bit of uh, information about each thing. Articles of note, new books, essays, and opinion. And it goes down quite a ways, so there's all sorts of really interesting things. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you know, like for doubt here, he goes, Minerality, tar, tobacco, gas, cat urine, wine talk is weird. As for the taste of wine, it's located on that thin line between pleasurable and gross. Uh, and secret societies once flourished in Europe. Their rituals obscure, their impact outsized. The incubated democracy in modern science, dot, 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 more. you got to go to the next thing, more. But this is an absolutely fascinating place to visit. Now, it also has links on the, on the very left. You can see um, notable things, nota bene. Uh, and up at the top, it tells you what the list is. It says nota bene, which is no, breaking news, newspapers, magazines, book reviews, columnists, favorites, weblogs, etc. And there are links to all of these things. So. If you want to learn stuff, especially, um, you know, new things, especially in areas that you're unfamiliar with, and that to me is what's so great about this site because there are a lot of things I don't know. Uh, over here at Essays and Opinions, look at this. In the second one it says, Hunter gatherers, esoteric cults, revolutionary brigades. We've always had a capacity of in-group in imitation, and we are as ritualistic today as we've ever been more. Now that's just... That's fascinating to me. And so anyway, I wanted to uh, let you know about this link. And uh, for anyone who is anywhere near the information junkie that I am, I think you will enjoy it. And if you know an information junkie, please send them to Arts and Letters Daily. It's a wonderful, wonderful place to visit. Uh, anyway, thank you very much. I hope there's something here that you like. And... Good night or morning or whatever it is where you are.